Thank you for joining us for another episode of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at the News Forum, where all voices matter. As we head into another budget cycle, the Canadian Taxpayers Federation has, has some suggestions for the Doug Ford government in order to help Ontario taxpayers. We welcome Jay Goldberg to the show. He's the interim director for Ontario for the CTF. Welcome to the show. It's great to be with you. I guess the first question is, how is the Ontario taxpayer faring these days, in your opinion? The Ontario taxpayer, uh, in some respects, they're faring well, but in many others, uh, we're not. And uh, the, the bottom line is governments at all levels are actually profiting off of the inflation that we're seeing right now that are hitting families so hard at the kitchen table. A great example is the sales tax. So last year, the Ford government brought in $4 billion more than they anticipated in sales tax revenue. And that's because, you know, as prices go up, sales tax is charged as a percentage of the good. And so governments are collecting more tax than ever before. Uh, and Ontarians are struggling. We're paying, obviously, that $4 billion comes from somewhere. It's coming out of the pockets of taxpayers all across the province. Uh, we're seeing, we had a balanced budget last year, but uh, Doug Ford's talking about going back into the red for another potentially four years. Uh, and I would say that the brightest spot that we've seen in the past while was uh, the Ford government's decision to extend the gas tax for another year, uh, the gas tax cut, I should say, uh, which is great news and could save families up to $500. Yeah, good point on that. Uh, I know people uh, certainly have welcomed that, that in the past. Uh, you've talked and written about in, uh, recently about uh, basically some unfinished business from the 2018 provincial election campaign in terms of promises that could really help the Ontario taxpayer now. Could you uh, elaborate a little bit on that? Absolutely. So when Doug Ford was running in 2018, he promised to bring uh, fiscal responsibility to Queen's Park. And what we've seen instead is that the debt and deficit have skyrocketed. Uh, we are now seven, uh, $475 billion in debt here in the province of Ontario. That's the most indebted sub-sovereign government in the world. We are paying $14.5 billion a year in debt interest. That's more than a billion dollars a month. And just for comparison's sake, with a billion dollars, you can build a state-of-the-art hospital. So we're literally sacrificing one state-of-the-art hospital every month just from paying the debt interest that we are. And so in 2018, Doug Ford said he was going to stop the uh, you know, spending parade at Queen's Park. Unfortunately, even before the pandemic, the government increased spending. They've increased it during the pandemic. They haven't really uh, pulled it back at all. Uh, you'll give them credit. Last year, Ontario had its first balanced budget in well over a decade. Uh, right. That was a good thing. We saw a $2 billion surplus. But again, Doug Ford's talking about going back into the deficit. That's not what he promised voters in 2018. He promised fiscal uh, responsibility, and we want to see that at Queen's Park. Yeah, how much of it do you see as a kind of a hangover from the COVID lockdowns and, and so forth? I think some of it is a hangover, but some of it is, uh, in some ways, the government using the pandemic as an excuse to carry things on. Uh, one example is political welfare. So the, the Ford government gives money four times a year to political parties uh, simply for the fact that they got votes in the previous election. And there's no strings tied to any of that money. They can spend it on attack ads. They can spend it on all kinds of things. We know, for example, that the Harper government federally scrapped it. Uh, Doug Ford said that he would get rid of it. Instead, he's reintroduced it, put it on steroids. And he's saying they're going to get rid of it after the pandemic is over. But the get rid of it date is the 1st of January in 2025. So I think the government is, in some ways, using the pandemic still, as we see at the federal level, as an excuse to keep the spending parade going. Indeed. Uh, we've, uh, we've got a new budget coming out, uh, I guess, from Peter Bethlen Falvey in the uh, weeks ahead. Uh, what do you expect out of that? Uh, I expect more money they're going to want to spend on infrastructure projects. I think we've seen uh, announcements already about some small changes within the healthcare system to try to shorten wait times. Um, but I do hope to see something to help out taxpayers. Uh, they're hurting really bad. Grocery bills last year were $1,000 more than the year before for the typical family. So budgets are being crunched and, and it's time for the government to step in and help. And the way to do that is to lower taxes, not to increase spending. 
Jay, we're going to take a brief uh, break for our, uh, our own way of uh, keeping uh, everything within line. It's called commercials. We'll be back with you after that break. Please stay with us. And welcome back to Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement. I'm here with Jay Goldberg. He is the Interim Director for Ontario for the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Jay, uh, obviously part of the emphasis of what we've been talking about is efforts to reduce spending. Uh, does CTF any, have any ideas where they'd like to focus that, those uh, spending reductions? Yeah, absolutely. Look, there, there's a wage gap here in Ontario, and what we're not talking about uh, certainly isn't talked about enough. It's the gap between the private sector and what government employees are getting. Government employees, there have been a number of studies that show, on average, they're paid 12% better than people in the private sector. They have all kinds of very generous pension uh, systems and other benefits, all kinds of extra vacation time that people in the private sector just don't have. And so we know that uh, Minister Fideli has talked about the fact that well over $75 billion of the government's budget goes toward uh, paying the uh, salaries of government employees. And so one of the ways to try to reduce spending certainly would be to have a freeze in place uh, so that we can get to a point where uh, people who work for government are paid in line with people who are working in the private sector. And I think taxpayers expect no less. And of course, uh, this is uh, really interesting because it does play into some of the other public policy issues. Uh, uh, you've probably noted, uh, and I've noted as a former Minister of Health myself, that a lot of the opposition to having uh, private independent health facilities uh, as a place to expand uh, you know, uh, a lot of these uh, operations, whether it's cataracts or what have you, uh, the, the big opponents of that are, are, the, uh, are the unions, the public sector unions. So uh, it, it's not only a question of cost, uh, but it's also about how to save our healthcare system or do other things that the government needs to do. Absolutely. We have atrocious wait times uh, here in Ontario for all kinds of surgeries. Um, I, I personally know someone who had to wait well over a year to get a hip replacement. Uh, you know, people are in pain and, and and things have to change. And I think the Ford government is uh, taking a step in the right direction. Uh, and for those who are, are saying that, you know, this is somehow a move to American style privatized health care, I would say, you know, the Ford government is pursuing almost the exact same policy as the NDP EV government in British Columbia right. as a way to try to clear the backlogs and using these private clinics. And so I, I don't think this is a massive partisan issue. I think it's very common sense. Uh, and, you know, if we can improve outcomes and also bring, um, you know, smarter elements of the marketplace that is going to both improve outcomes and also hopefully keep costs down, uh, I think both of those are good things. And I think this is a step in the right direction. I also think Premier Ford was very clear uh, in saying that nobody's going to be paying with their credit card. They're going to be paying with their OHIP card. And so uh, I think a lot of the opposition that we're hearing uh, is really just uh, posturing. Uh, let's uh, switch gears uh, for a second. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the CTF stance on corporate subsidies. Yeah, it's time to get rid of them. Uh, we are spending way too much money on giving money to corporations that don't need our help. And I think this is something that could be a cross-party consensus. You know, the Ford government announced last year giving over half a billion dollars to Stellantis, which is a Fortune 500 company, to retool a couple of plants here in Ontario. Uh, for electric batteries, electric car batteries. Look, we want to see business here in Ontario, but the way to do it is not just to cherry pick which businesses stay here and invest here, but to create an environment where every business is going to want to come here. And so if we're spending billions of dollars a year handing out money to a few different corporations, why not take that same money, lower the corporate tax rate, and attract not only that business to be here and stay here and employ people here, but also to attract businesses from other provinces and other countries. I think it's just common sense. Uh, and I don't think people on any side of the political aisle should be supporting a situation in which very rich, wealthy companies are getting taxpayer dollars. Yeah, the uh, track record of governments, uh, not just the Ontario government, but more generally in picking winners is not very good, is it? No, it's been a terrible track record. And 
you know, the reality is that the marketplace exists for a reason. Uh, it figures out, uh, you know, who's going to succeed and who's not. And, you know, there's there's a reason the marketplace, uh, you know, is has the invisible hand, as, as we've all heard of. But government is very bad and has a very long track record of spending billions of dollars helping out companies that, uh, you know, are not sustainable or companies that ultimately... Uh, become too reliant on the government or companies that end up closing shop uh, simply because of poor management. And so if you lower the tax rate, uh, you know, that's going to help businesses that are well-structured uh, compete and stay in the marketplace and, and come to Ontario. Uh, and that's going to help every company, uh, big and small, including those that will succeed and those that won't. And we're back here at Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, with uh, Jay Goldberg. He is the Interim Director for Ontario for the Canadian Taxpayer Federation, just talking about kind of the state of uh, fiscal policy uh, in Ontario uh, in the weeks ahead of the Ontario Budget 2023. Jay, uh, I know the CTF has been a great advocate for many, many years, certainly when I was in, in government as well, about uh, deregulation, cutting red tape, uh, What's your agenda for Ontario for that? You know, I, I'm really pleased that uh, the Ford government has created uh, a ministry. Um, you know, we're not always looking for extra ministries to be created and more, uh, you know, uh, civil servants and such, but, but at least to give clear attention to the issue of red tape. And, you know, I hear from business owners, small business owners all the time. Actually, in many cases, they're saying, you know, uh, high taxes is making it difficult to do business, but regulation is making it even more difficult. And so we've heard that in so many different industries. And so uh, I think the Ford government's done is doing well uh, to try to cut red tape. I've certainly spoken with people in the government who I know are pursuing some ambitious projects there. But, um, you know, it's very clear that we've had governments for too long in Ontario that have been adding regulations, adding red tape. And all that really does is drive businesses out of the province. And so if we want to make Ontario a, a competitive place to, to attract businesses, of course, we have to have a competitive tax rate. We have to have, uh, you know, competitive uh, electricity rates and such. But you have to make sure it's an environment where companies are willing to move to and don't have to fear that they're just going to get caught up in red tape for months or years before actually accomplishing what they want to do. And so I, I commend the Ford government for, uh, you know, they very clearly have made genuine efforts towards reducing red tape. I think that's a really good thing. Uh, obviously, there's more work to do. Um, but the fact that we have a strong minister who is on that file, it, it's good to see. Excellent. Um, I'm going to bring you back to about the 30,000 foot level a little bit and uh, talk a little bit about the debt crisis, because this is something that is an overhang, it's, it's uh, still with us, of course. Uh, why does it matter for the average ordinary Ontarian that we talk about debt reduction? Well, it matters because it's a question of whether you'd be preferring to send money to bondholders on Bay Street or whether you'd rather build new hospitals or have lower taxes or, or put more money into schools. I mean, it really is a trade-off. We are spending over a billion dollars a month in debt interest, as I said before. And with that money, you could be building a state-of-the-art hospital every month here in the province of Ontario. That's a heck of a lot of money, and that's a lot of things that we're sacrificing. Uh, and so, again, our debt here in Ontario, $475 billion. That's the largest, uh, in, when you're talking about sub-sovereign governments in the world, uh, it's very dangerous, more than California, more than uh, you know any other comparable uh, area. And so... I think people need to realize that running deficits, uh, adding to the debt year after year, it has consequences. And the consequence is that we are currently spending $14.5 billion on debt interest. And if we didn't have to do that, you could cut the HST in half, the provincial portion. You could, as I said, build all those new hospitals. You could invest more into schools. And so it really is a trade-off. And if you look at other provinces like Saskatchewan, like Alberta, that have a lower debt burden in terms of debt to GDP and in terms of individual uh, debt, if you were to break it down per person, uh, they have more money available to spend on priorities that taxpayers have. And so that's the ultimate uh, conclusion here. 
is that here in Ontario, we're spending about $14.5 billion a year on debt interest. If we, for example, had something similar to Saskatchewan in terms of the debt burden, uh, we'd have an extra $7 billion a year to put towards the priorities of Ontarians. But we don't have that now. Uh, we also know the Ford government, and I commend them on this, has been open and honest that for every 1% increase uh, in, in the uh, uh, interest rates that the Bank of Canada does, that's $650 million extra that we're spending on debt interest a year. And so that is soaring. And the fact that interest rates are going up, that's all the more reason to be very concerned about how much debt this province is taking on. Yeah, I, you know, uh, I think the, uh, I think you're right. And it, it, but the, the, the challenge has been obviously is to uh, convince uh, whatever the electorate, Ontarians, Canadians, uh, that uh, the debt, which is a kind of, it's such a big number now, it's almost impossible for people to fathom how much our debt is and how, why that matters. And I think uh, that's incumbent on, on political leadership to make it a, a story that is still worth telling uh, so that uh, people will support uh, some, some measures that will deal with it. We're just going to take another break, though, Jay. Jay, would love to know, uh, has the CTF submitted or will you be submitting uh, in the province's uh, pre-budget hearings, uh, sort of your thoughts and analysis of the situation? Yeah, we, we have. And, uh, you know, some of the highlights are, of course, getting rid of corporate welfare, which you've talked about. Uh, reducing the sales tax is actually a big one we've put in this year. And that's because, as I said, uh, as prices go up and because the sales tax is collected as a percentage of that price, the government is raking in all kinds of more money. Uh, they took in $4 billion more in sales tax revenue than expected last year. And if you were to reduce the HST by one point, uh, that would mean $3.5 billion back in the pockets of Ontarians. So it actually wouldn't have a negative impact on the budget, uh, but it would help uh, Ontarians a lot who are dealing with inflation and the cost of living uh, crisis. Certainly we saw, you know, in your time at the federal level that that was done and that was, you know, a huge relief. For taxpayers all across the country. You can argue with economists about what the best, best tax cut is, but if you really want to give people relief from high prices and inflation, that's one of the best ways to do it. And so we definitely called on them to do that. The other thing that I would say is really big that we're calling for is to maintain the balanced budget. It took us 15 years to get back to balance. And I give the four government credit for balancing the budget last year, but that was largely because they had more revenue than they expected. And so I think the Minister of Finance uh, has to be very prudent. We don't want to go back into that debt uh, situation and more deficits that we've seen for so many years. We've hit $475 billion of debt. Uh, it's extremely high. It's incredibly unaffordable. Uh, and it's about time that we get a handle on it. And the first way you do that is by balancing the books. So this should not be a one-off that we saw last year. We have to make sure that we continue to do that in the years ahead. The Financial Accountability Office, which is the provincial equivalent of the Parliamentary Budget Officer, has said that there is a path to balancing the books, and all they really have to do is maintain spending at current levels. And so as long as the Ford government doesn't go on a spending bonanza, we can keep the books balanced in this province. That's exactly what we should do, and it's what I hope we see from the government uh, later this winter. Have we had any indication from Peter Bethlenfalvy, the finance minister, that uh, his intention is to keep the books balanced? Well, I mean, the government has projected previously that they intend to go back into deficit, but the Ford government has a long history of uh, not really presenting accurate uh, numbers when it comes to what they expect the budget outcome to be at the end of the year versus what it is. Uh, for the last few years, uh, or really through the government's whole tenure, we've seen They've projected deficits that are anywhere from, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine billion dollars more than they actually end up being at the end of the year. Uh, so it could be that the Ford government projects a deficit. We end up with a surplus. That's what happened last year. Um, you know, I really don't know what the government's ultimately going to decide come this budget. Uh, but what I do know is that we should not be running a deficit. Uh, and I also think the government needs to be honest with Ontarians. Yes, it's always nice for us to get numbers that you know show us a deficit that's much lower or a surplus that we didn't expect. 
but it's been a consistent pattern for years that the Ford government has been off in terms of actually projecting what the fiscal situation is going to be. I think they owe it to Ontarians to be straight up with us, to tell us exactly where the numbers are going to be at the end of the year. And I hope that means that we'll be in surplus territory. And your proposals on the sales tax, that's for a one point reduction. Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, a one point reduction to start. The reason we we're starting there is to say that you've got four billion dollars of revenue, more than you expected. Uh, this would leave three and a half billion back in taxpayers' pockets, so it will not negatively impact the numbers at all. I would love to see more if we could start to tackle, for example, the uh, you know the gap between a government employee pay and those in the private sector. If we could start to tackle that, you could be talking you know two or three percent, and and that's something I think that we'd love to see. Uh, and it's something that, you know, makes Alberta so much more competitive, that is making Saskatchewan more competitive. And it's time for Ontario to to follow the lead of the Harper government from years ago, put more money back in the hands of uh, the pockets of people. Uh, and, and again, w- basing inflation, this is one of the best immediate kinds of relief that you can give to people all across the province. Everyone pays the sales tax. And so everyone could benefit from a decrease. Jay Goldberg, it's been a pleasure having you on the program, and we'll be watching this story very closely. Thanks for being here today. Great to be with you. Excellent discussion with Jay Goldberg there about uh, the future Ontario budget and what it means for Ontario taxpayers. Thanks for watching.